TechTales 114, good morning to you. It's been a while since I recorded a TechTales episode on the morning that I'm going to publish it. That's just how it worked out this time. This is a follow-up video on a computer that I've reported on before in TechTales and showing here the uh, playlist for TechTales 113 was the last one I did. Well, this computer was reported on up here in TechTales 107 and 108. And in 107, I was connected remotely to the computer trying to trying to fix what was wrong with it. And what was happening is the user would walk away from the computer when they come back, maybe even hours later, they find it frozen, locked up. The, the desktop is still there. They could move the mouse around, but they can't click on anything. And then in 108, I showed uh, pictures and videos of the, of the spaghetti mess of wires on the floor and that some of the wires had been traumatized or cut through and some other things about it. So I brought that computer into my lab and what I had decided to do was just as a troubleshooting step install a fresh copy of Windows on it and see if it still has the problem. This TechTales is the story of just how I go about doing that. Now the computer is still sitting over here and you know what I'll report at the end of this what its current state is. So I'm going to click over here to this next tab this tab is showing, oh, it's just showing that I uploaded a, this, this video, the title of it. I can't move my mouse right over it because then the title disappears. It's called Tech Tales 114 Private Source Troubleshooting. So I, I had recorded my work as I was working on it to use as raw footage for this Tech Tales. And I found that the YouTube's player control features I like better than any other video player. So I uploaded it there uh, just so that I could use it to make this edition of TechTales. So here is that video. Down here you can see it's flagged as private. That one's never going to go public. I'm going to delete that after I create this TechTales. This is just here for me to be able to play through it as I'm recording this TechTales session. So I'm going to maximize this window so that'll fill up the screen. So at the time here, I'm connected remotely to this computer, even though it's in my lab. And this is showing the screen of the computer itself. And it's showing here, Doug Betts would like to send you the file, Doug Betts Tools Zip. What I'm doing is I'm initiating the copy of my tools zip file from my computer to Lori's computer. And I'm going to be referring to it as Lori's computer because her name just shows up all around the place. I just it's not feasible to not. And, and the first name is not very revealing anyway. So this is a common process that I use to copy my tools file to the computer that I'm working with. So I press the space bar to start it. Uh, start this video playing. So I go to the C drive. I go into a folder called SW Setup. In that folder, I create a subfolder. No, I don't. I just I just transfer this Doug Betts tools into this SW setup folder. So there I'm clicking save and then I'm going to expand it. This receiving file is going to zip forward because this file is edited a bit. So when it gets up here, I don't know where it's, it's going to jump for there it goes to 91% and almost done. And then I'm going to extract it and that un uh, unzips a series of folders that I use for various purposes. So here coming back, there's that zip file, right click on it and then choose extract all. And it's going to extract it into a folder that uses the same name unless I change the name right here. So then do I, I, I I'm going to Whoops, no, it, it is edited. So here I'm actually in the Doug Betts Tools folder. The two that I'm interested in working with are for this purpose is Fabs Auto Backup and Macrium Backups. Now here I'm going to pause it at this point. I've just poked through a little bit and I noticed that this computer already has an M drive. I commonly will split a large hard drive into two partitions and the second partition will become the M drive and I'll just schedule it to do routine full image backups. 
I do this with the free version of Macrium Reflect because it's not a a, a uh, case set. It, it, it's not really needed. It's just kind of an extra superfluous thing that I that I sometimes will do on a computer. This computer is a minor purpose computer. It doesn't even have a regular user. Lori's name shows up here all over the place, but this is not her primary workstation. She goes over that computer to do to do some flyers and, and, and announcements for the residents in this government assisted apartment building. So we're not highly concerned about this computer. So here I'm going to press the spacebar again. Now notice at the top of this, it says backup running. And as I was working in the lab here, I realized, oh, there's a backup running right now. So I move the mouse down to the notification area in the bottom right corner. And you can bear, oh, you can't see that because I'm going to, I'm going to turn off this CPU thing because that's getting in the way right now. So there you see the mouse arrow pointed down in the, to the left side of the system tray. Uh, and that's the Macrium Reflect. And I do a double click on that. I see backup running and I take a look at the status of it here. And then I decide, oh, well, this is doing a fresh backup for me right now. I'm just going to let that run. I'm going to hold down the shift key and press period key to speed this up a little bit because I know I have that edited out there. It jumped all the way to 100% and it shows image completed in 18 minutes. Let's see this mouse here. You should be able to see me moving. Yeah. And then it's going on and then I go to Fabs Auto Backup. So now I, I clicked in the Fabs Auto Backup directory and I, I edited out where I'm actually launching the program because it reveals my my license credentials. So I didn't want to put that on YouTube. But here's the way that Fabs Auto Backup 7 Pro works is it wants me to put in the order number and the email address anytime I'm first running the program on any particular computer. So I have this Fabs Auto Backup 7 Pro license, which allows me to use it on my client's computers. There is a Fabs Auto Backup 7 without the word Pro that's free to end users if you want to use this for your own computer. And what this does is it's just going to do a data file backup. So I'm doing this because even though I just did an image backup, my intention here for troubleshooting this computer is to install a fresh copy of Windows 10 on the computer. Now, if that works, if that solves the problem, then I could just restore the Fabs Auto Backup backup to that fresh Windows 10 and be done with it. And I, in that case, I haven't actually figured out why the computer has been locking up, but it's just a matter of getting the job done, getting the computer back out in service. So spacebar to continue, and that'll get us into Fabs Auto Backup. Now, if I'm correct with the order number and the email address, then I get this message that says your order information is correct. All features are unlocked. Pressing spacebar again to move the video forward. I accept the license. And then here's backup data, restore data, and transfer data. So backup data would be to back up the data that's on this drive that's related to the user account and the public account. I can put that on, on an external hard drive. In this case, I'm putting it onto the M drive, that partition of the hard drive that's in this computer. I could restore data in this second one, or I could transfer data. Transfer data means I have another drive that's connected right now, and that's going to be my boot drive, and I want to transfer the data. Or maybe perhaps I want to transfer from one username to another username. That would, that would be what I would do that option for. So here's what it looks like. It gives me a user profile as a source and I can specify a backup location. Here I'm expanding the PC, going to the M drive, and I'm going to create a folder in here to hold this Fabs Auto Backup. So I call it Fabs Backups, and now it shows, I'm spot pausing here, shows M colon backslash Fabs Backups. Down here it shows date and computer name. So if I don't change this, it, it, it's going to name the uh, subfolder in Fabs Backups 
It's going to name a subfolder showing today's date and the name of the computer and over here the profile name, which in this case is Laurie. Spacebar to continue, clicking next. Now here I have Fabs Auto Backup gives me these tabs, user data, public data, extra files and folders, optional items. So we're on the user data tab. There's these check marks for all these different types of data that I might want to back up. There's a scroll bar over here. You can see it's going to scroll down a ways because there are other types of data that I could either choose or not choose. By default, check marks are showing on all the things that Fabs Auto Backup has sensed to be present. So spacebar for it to continue. And you can see there's some things that are not selected. I'm hitting spacebar once in a while to pause it. Not going to talk about all those different sections. When I click the next button, it's going to go on to the public data tab. See, I guess, oh, I'm paused right now. So waiting, there's the public data tab. I click next and it moves on to the public data tab. Again, it scrolls down. There's things that are selected, things that are not. Now I'm on the extra files and folders. I could put a check mark up here for additional folders and choose whatever folders, expand any of these sections and select anything that I want to back up. Spacebar again to move on. I don't think I select anything here, do I? Yeah, I'm moving that mouse around. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, I know what it is. I'm going to select the SW setup folder. That's where I have a bunch of drivers, a bunch of installation software for various different things. I'm not sure I need it for this computer, but I just kind of on a whim, <laughs> on a whim at the last moment decided to do it. So now here we're at the uh, ready to go, the launch screen. I typically put a check mark on this keep folders and dates option. It says that's going to be slower. I don't know that it. I've never compared it. So here's taking a snapshot and I think, yeah, here it's running through. I probably advance this forward. I'm going to hit the, nope, there it is. It's, it's done. So it finished that. This shows a time of 1116. I think I'm about to scroll up to see when it starts to get a handle on how long it took. It seems to me it was somewhere around, well, it's 11.16, what, four minutes? Yeah, because there's uh, there I'm scrolled at the top and it's 11.11. So 11.11, 11.16, four or five minutes. And then what I do, I go look at WinVer. So this is on 21H1 and it's Windows 10 Home. I'm going to need to know that it's Windows 10 Home when I install the new version, uh, a fresh copy of of Windows 10 because I have to select whether I want Windows 10 Home or Pro. So it's important to check that before starting the installation of the new version. So here I'm doing restart. Now I think at this point I already have a USB memory stick connected to the computer with the Windows 10 installation media. So here we're restarting and I imagine I've got this not taking too long, so I'm just letting it run. So here I've done the, uh, let's see here what I did for the startup menu, I would have done the escape key. This is an HP computer and it responds to the escape key to give me this startup menu. What I really want is the boot menu. And if I knew that it was the F9 key, I could have gone straight for the F9 key to get the boot menu. I wasn't sure, so I could do the escape key. So then here, I think I actually choose boot menu, yes. And then here's pausing again. I have EFI boot sources and it shows my SanDisk Cruiser Glide memory stick, which has the installation media. So I'm not going to use uh, legacy boot sources because this computer is already booting as EFI. I can tell that because it's not offering me a legacy boot for the hard drive. It doesn't have anything listed in the legacy boot section. So spacebar again, selecting SanDisk, and then that's going to boot off of the memory stick and begin the Windows 10 installation. So I think I have some things edited short here too. 
There's the last, uh, what, three quarters of this video that's not edited down, so I'm not going to play through all of that. I'm going to hit the L key to jump forward by 10 seconds at a time. Here's setup starting, and then right arrow key to go five seconds at a time. So here, I have to know which edition to choose here because I'm, I'm trying to start out fresh. Uh, so Windows 10 Home. Let's see, did I miss? I'm going to go back a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to go back a little bit. Here we go. So let's play this through. So setup is starting, and the first screen it comes to is this one, asking for activate Windows. I'm going to click on, I don't have a product key. And then it comes to letting me choose the operating system. And then click Next. Uh, right arrow key. Okay, so here I can choose upgrade or custom. I'm going to choose custom because I want to delete the existing partition. If I choose upgrade, it's not going to, it's going to tell me, no, I got to boot an operating Windows 10 system before I can select upgrade. So spacebar custom is the only way to go if you're booting off of USB memory stick, and that's to do a fresh installation. So here's the existing partitions. As you're looking through this, these are all drive zero, so that's all my hard drives. Look at partition number five for Mac and backups. I certainly don't want to delete that one because that's where my backups are. I'm going to I'm going to delete this partition four. I can tell that's the C drive. Nothing on here actually has the letter C. I know this is the C drive because it's the only one that's large enough. It's 354 gigabytes. These three are all megabytes. So I'm going to I could delete just this partition or I could delete all four of these to do a fresh install. And I'm not, I don't even recollect which way I go on here. Let's find out. I'm highlighting that one and I should click delete here in a moment. At this point, I'm explaining to myself what's going on. I have the audio turned off for this file that I'm, uh, this video that I'm playing to you. And there, I'm gonna click delete and then answer okay to delete that and then unallocated space and I'm clicking next. So in this case, I only deleted that one partition. Uh, by leaving those other partitions, you're keeping whatever the manufacturer has put on there for diagnostics or for installing the original operating system. And all we have to redo is the partition that contains the operating system or the C drive. So here, I think this, I don't, I think I let this run through, so I'm going to use the L key to go forward by 10 seconds at a time. You're hearing how often I'm tapping that as it goes through. Now it's restarting, and we're almost done with this uh, video playback. It looks, well, no, we're halfway through. So L, 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 getting ready. See, I didn't, I didn't edit down this, so then Selecting United States, now five seconds at a time, skip the extra keyboard, important steps to do, then I'm going to put in a, uh, here it's asking for an account, I want, oh, here I, real, I realize that I still have this computer connected to the Ethernet, and I want to create a local account, so here I'm stuck in this, in this situation where how do you do this with Windows 10? So I'm going to show something here, I think, that you may not realize if you've... Now here I'm trying some things that used to work. I'm just putting in bogus email account names, just hammering away at some letters, because it used to be that would eventually get you to a point where you could put in a, a username. Now I just paused it because I want to go back a little bit and point something out. I want to point out that in the upper left corner, there is no back arrow. Up here in the upper left corner, there is no arrow pointed to the left. Now I hit spacebar again, and I'm still trying these bogus account names. And I'm going to click next, and there. Uh, oh, okay, there it is. It, it's The name of this video up here is hiding it. There's a left arrow up there. Let's go back and see. How, when did that left arrow appear? I'm doing backwards by 30 seconds. Okay, so here's just a moment, and it's about, okay. Yeah, that left arrow is up there. So see, it looks like I could use that left arrow at any time 
to go back to the to the prior screen that we were never shown. So I'm going to get back up here through these bogus email accounts I put in. And here's when I finally did that. I, okay, I'm, I kind of did some forward and back. Now I'm just going to give you a space bar because I've got that JKJK JK in there and I'm hitting next and it doesn't work. And then I go up to the upper left corner. You see my mouse arrow up there. You got two mouse arrows on the screen right now. <laughs> And I click that back arrow. And when I click that back arrow, that brings me back here where I can just put in a username. Now, at this point, I have disconnected the, the Ethernet. I think. <laughs> can I tell that here? I think I have. Because once I realized the Ethernet was connected, I, I unplugged it. Um, I'm pretty sure I did. But I think that left arrow was there even if I was still connected to the Ethernet. Not totally sure on that point. So click next here. Ask for password. I don't put any password. And then do all of this privacy stuff. You've probably seen that. I'm going to right arrow through that. Right arrow, right arrow, right arrow. And get uh, right arrow is doing five seconds at a time. And then here. You see we're at the desktop and you see in the bottom right corner the wireframe globe. So indeed, we're not connected to the Ethernet. I'm quite sure once I realized I was still connected to Ethernet, I unplugged it. I'm not sure if that had an impact on being able to press that left arrow to put in a standard username. I'd have to go back and, and check that. But that's something I've heard people report is that if you if you if you get to that point with an Ethernet cable plugged in, you're you're shot. You can't do a local account. Not quite true. Uh, so there is the Windows 10 desktop. And in this case, I don't do any of my routine configurations type stuff that I would normally do. The, my purpose here uh, um, here. OK, so here's where I plugged in the Ethernet and it's asking if I want to be able to be discoverable by other PCs so that I can copy files between computers and I typically want to say yes to that in my lab because I, I copy those tools to the computer. This installation doesn't have those tools because this is fresh Windows 10. So I answer yes to that option. Then let's see, I'm going into settings and I'm going to uh, do uh, um, updates. So pressing the left, the L to go forward by 10 seconds at a time and get through all of this and then that's that's the end of that so that is the process so that computer is 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 still here in the lab and it has been uh, running uh, unattended for a few days and has not locked up so i just turned that monitor on over there that's it right there <laughs> it has not crashed because that computer is such a simple installation, I think what I'm going to do next is just install Microsoft 365, restore the user's files from Fab's Auto Backup, and return it to service. Part of me, the, the, the purist in me, the purist troubleshooter, the idealist troubleshooter, I'd rather go back and restore that Macrium image and figure out why is it locking up and surgically fix that? But I have I have no leads. I have no I, I, I can throw darts. It's like having a blindfold on and trying to get the the dart into one of those little tiny patterns uh, 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 that's on a dart board, all those little tiny uh, arc sections and one of those is right. I don't know which one it is. And I'm blindfolded when I'm, when I'm throwing the darts. I have already in those previous tech tales shown my initial investigations to try to find a lead, a clue as to why this is happening. And nothing stood out. So all the other things that are on my mind that I could do, and there are a lot of them, <laughs> they're throwing darts with a blindfold on, not even knowing which of those semi-arcs has one of those arcs, whatever you, I want to call them, segments of a dartboard, which one of those segments is the right fix 
and I'm trying to throw the darts blindfolded and get the right one. So there's, there, there's times in troubleshooting that you just get the computer back to service. And this is one of those, much to my disappointment. So that's it for this Tech Tales. I hope that's been useful. Have a great day. Catch you later. Goodbye.